Meanwhile, about a week away, potentially, the City Commission in Battle Creek could uh, vote on whether or not there will be a panhandling ordinance. Actually, a couple of them that are up for discussion now. A cursory vote took place, as you know, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, that passed on a 5-4 vote. And since then, uh, there has been a lot of discussion about this in the community and uh, well, views, uh, points of view from all sides. While back, when this uh, was just getting momentum, we talked with uh, Elaine Hunsinker at the Haven of Rest and Doug Stewart at the Share Center. Back with us today is uh, Doug. And sitting in for Elaine, who was called away this morning, is Daniel Jones from the Haven. Good morning to both of you today. Good morning, Richard. Morning, Richard. We appreciate the uh, time you're giving us yeah, yet again. You. you know, the, the last time... When we talked, Doug, and Elaine was here, we discussed uh, the concept of this. We didn't know yet what the ordinances looked like. Mm -hmm. uh, and really, since then, there's been all of this discussion. And uh, uh, opinions have come from all around. And so it seemed appropriate to ask you to come back. And, and as you've had some time to think about this and study some of the reaction that's gone on, I was curious to know. Uh, maybe a follow-up would be in order here to talk a little bit about what your impressions are so far. And, you know, Doug, when you were here last time, you talked about an understanding of both sides, that is to mm -hmm. say folks whom you meet on a daily basis, and Daniel too, mm -hmm. uh, are, are very possibly folks who are out there asking people to help them by panhandling. Mm -hmm. uh, but you made a comment about having been in a situation where you felt a little insecure, uh, having been, um, I guess, uh, a surprise encounter when somebody asked you for money in a, uh, at a nighttime kind of situation. Right. And, yeah. and so you made the point, you know, you can see both sides of this. Where do you stand today on the, the feeling about this whole initiative now that you've had time to think about it? Well, first of all, thank you for allowing Dan and I to be back again today and representing our organizations that have, you know, acute sensitivity to sure. the situation and the scenarios that unfold related to panhandling or solicitation. Um, my thoughts, really, and I attended the uh, initial voting for the city commission on the two uh, the two main ordinances or kind of overarching ordinances that are actually pretty broad. Mm -hmm. um, which will be, I think, pretty problematic to enforce unless they hone it down over time. But um, I talked the last time about the fact that really there's three subsets of people that solicit or panhandle. There are the professional panhandlers who live in a very nice home, drive a very nice car, get SSI or SSDI, and they go out into a lucrative area such as maybe out near Beckley Road area and they make from 100 to 300 dollars a day you know on a good day and that's supplemental income that's non-taxable and they drive away and go back to their home and it's just an additional source of revenue there's the other subset that are really somewhat on the vulnerable side um, they burn their bridges with the family. They maybe burn their bridges with the Haven or the Share Center by not following rules or compliance standards and are out on the streets with maybe minimal support. But again, they're making a very good living. They're actually making better living than a person that would work at McDonald's. Hmm. Um, I mean, and they're living in hotels or they're getting their meals from McDonald's or other places. And then there is the subset of individuals that we see more commonly downtown that have a substance abuse or behavioral health disorder, and they're trying to augment their income by panhandling to, unfortunately, uh, support their addiction. Is that and the way you see it, by the way, Daniel? Well, when you just looking at those subsets that Richard uh, brought out here, uh, I'm sorry, Doug. I'm looking at Richard. I'm <laughs> That's okay. Looking at the subset of people that Doug brought out, you know, the groups that are very organized and go to Beckley Road and raise those dollars. Yep. You know, the Haven doesn't see those people necessarily. They're yeah, not coming either. into, or, or the Share Center, they're not coming into our organizations for hmm. services. The second group, the people that are burned their bridges, may have a mental health issue or substance abuse issue. Yeah, we see those folks uh, quite regularly, and we're on a first-name basis with most mm -hmm. of them, and I'm sure Doug's group is as well. Uh, and then the last subset, you know, they're a real 
needy folks out there. But in any situation there, giving folks money on the street corner while they're holding a sign in any of those subset situations does not fulfill the purpose that you're really trying to help. In, in every event, it's going down a different road for substance abuse, for alcohol, for lottery tickets, or for some other purpose, maybe that somebody already has a really nice home and is just padding their pockets. Mm -hmm. So really giving money to the panhandlers doesn't help. I think if we addressed folks in the community who are very, very generous and wonderful people to please stop giving money to the panhandlers, then the issue kind of would evolve on its own. And we'll pick up where we leave off in a moment on that score in just a minute. We're here with uh, Doug Stewart from the Share Center and Daniel Jones from the Haven of Rest, uh, who uh, heroically interrupted his son's move into the residence hall at WMU to come and talk with us today because Elaine Hunsinger was called away. <laughs> so we thank you, Dan. You've got a car full of... Dorm I stuff. Back <laughs> to the gills right out there in your parking lot. Right well, th thank you for interrupting that <laughs> to be with us today. You know, it really is a, a serious subject. You heard us discussing this just a second ago, uh, the notion that there are uh, different sets of folks who might be out there asking random people for money. Mm -hmm. sure. So with that perspective and in your professional viewpoints, uh, being with the organizations you are with, does an ordinance somehow make sense here to try and correct this situation? Can I jump on that one, Doug? You go for uh, first, Dan. I'll, jump on I'll pile on you after know, that. <laughs> just before the break, we were talking about why is that person asking for money? I right. mean, that is the root cause here. Why is that person asking you for money? In so many cases, it's to do something... Uh, not positive. Mm -hmm. It's a drug issue. It's an alcohol issue. It's, you know, something else going down a, a very bad road. Um, to address a very short term, the symptom that somebody's asking you for money in this case does not help us get to the root cause. You know, in some cases it criminalizes being poor for that really needy person that's out there. I think the organizations in town that do the job of addressing poverty and things like that uh, I think we'd be better off if we really focused on what is working in our community to help the people and really address the reasons that they're asking for money in the first place. Substance abuse or extreme poverty or joblessness or inability to, you know, all of the wonderful things that BC Vision is looking at in improving our community. Let's, let's move that. Let's fast forward that and really start to address the issues of why that person is asking for money rather than criminalizing the act of asking. So does that mean then that what the Haven does and what Share Center does is uh, an effort that is honorable and has successes but is not enough? I would say so, yeah. I mean, okay. day in and day out, you know, the Haven and the Share Center and other significant nonprofits throughout the community that are in the human mm -hmm. resource area, including our Community Mental Health Authority and other entities that support substance abuse awareness and prevention. Um, you know, we're all working collaboratively together. Um, and I, what I was proposing at the last city commission meeting, you know, prior to their initial vote was let's kind of step back and, and develop. I don't want to over overdo the analysis, but I don't think there's been good analysis. I mean, truly, I want to make one distinction to your listeners and those who are viewing, is that the Beckley Road Corridor is not Ballow Creek. That's Emma Township. So we're not going to uh, impact that area uh, in terms of any type of an ordinance. But what I was hopeful um, is getting a task force together. And again, as Dan alluded to, looking at the root cause, we are just basically touching the surface. Get the churches, get the police department, get the nonprofits, get those that work with behavioral health and SUD clients together to address how we can impact their lives more positively. And again, as Dan and I have alluded to, don't give these individuals money. You're enabling them. You're feeding into their addiction. Put a granola bar in your glove box. 
do other things. We have a, a very vast resource card that's just a business size card that has all the main components that a person who is homeless or hungry can tap into by 211 or other AGC numbers. Mm -hmm. There is no reason to go hungry in this community. We have a very robust infrastructure. So when a person holds up their hungry sign, they are not connecting the dots or they're turning their eye to what we offer in this community. All right, so we have a, a mechanism in place that, that's successful, but I think what you've also said is as far as identifying those root causes, mm -hmm. getting at those situations, uh, we're, we're not there yet entirely. Not there, no. You know, people, uh, you know, Dan and I and our colleagues, you know, we try to move people along the continuum of recovery. And uh, some people are really open and accepting. They're at that tipping point where they say enough is enough. Mm -hmm. I do want to change my behavior and pattern. And then we can positively impact them. Some are in the chronic mode and they're hard to move along. But if we collaboratively move together, I think it's better time and money well spent than trying to enforce these two particular ordinances. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, you know, we, we certainly talked about this in the past, uh, particularly with the Haven, because we work so closely with the Haven in the summertime, especially. Mm -hmm. But um, the root cause problem that we sometimes don't get to, and I think you said this, Daniel, is because sometimes folks just aren't ready to take on the full responsibility of addressing that by way of, say, a program at the Haven. Sure. Um, or they're being enabled along the way. And again, uh -huh. this comes back to the communities. You know, I don't want to cast it in a dark light or anything like that. It's it's a generous community mm -hmm. and wonderful, and, and Doug's Share Center and my Haven benefit from that. Um, people are so generous that, yeah, they will give that person on the corner, as Doug alluded to, 100 to 300 bucks a day, cash, tax-free. And who can't, you know, there's no reason to change if I am on that corner with a sign when somebody's giving me $200 a day. Right. There is absolutely no reason for me to change. As a matter of fact, that's probably one of the most productive situations that person may have found themselves in. Mm -hmm. um, people will complain online or in postings. This person's begging in front of a sign that says help wanted. Well, that help wanted job pays maybe 11 bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. This person's getting easily 10, 20, 30 duck, you know, bucks an hour for free, tax free. Right. So why bother, <laughs> you know, filling an application out and having a boss when you can just get that money for free? Mm -hmm. So again, coming back to the enabling situation, our community is so generous, we enable this. Yeah. It, we when right before Ruth said we there was a couple here that uh, had was both in, uh, availing themselves of the Havens um, programs. And uh, the young lady talked about having been through the program to the extent that she was nearly done. Yep. The gentleman with whom she uh, appeared, was he admitted he was still a little on the fence with some of what the Haven asks him to do. I presume that you see that a fair amount. Um, sure. Uh, it's a big step. And as you mentioned, if somebody's not ready to, for the right reasons, step into one of those programs, which are very intense, um, they will probably not serve, successfully complete it. Mm -hmm. They'll be much more motivated when they've reached the bottom of themselves. And that is not a pretty place, but it's a very uh, holy place in terms of change taking place in that person's life. And I've been there with people and stood there with people, and it's messy and disgusting and dirty. But man, oh man, it's nowhere to go but up from yep. that place. And that's right. a beautiful thing. And, and Doug's seen it day in and day out, too. We see it every day at the Haven. We'll pick up where we leave off in just a moment on WBCK and uh, a few more minutes with uh, Doug Stewart and Daniel Jones. A couple more minutes with Doug Stewart at the Share Center and Daniel Jones at the Haven. So... As it relates to addressing these root causes instead of an ordinance, let's mm -hmm. say, uh, do you think there are new programs that either of your organizations could establish that might better address those root cause issues? You know, speaking on behalf of the Haven, Richard, I think what we could do better is outreach to the groups that are on either Beckley Road or downtown. I mean... The, uh, the gentlemen that were at the entrance to City Hall, I think, that were probably some of the very early on 
causes of these, you know, petitions being signed. I think for the city right. commissioners to do something. Yep. Uh, we're gentlemen in our adult foster care who are, you know, mentally challenged individuals that can't maintain their own home. They live at the Haven. Um, one of the worst offenders, probably in that regard, has been moved on. So hmm. uh, we've still got one to work with, but. You know, getting back to your original question, yeah, we could do a better job of outreach to this community of panhandlers and really getting them into our programs. Um, because we can't force people into these programs, again, we've got to work at the other side, which is to get people in the community to stop giving money to the panhandlers. Just stop it. Doug, what do you think about the Share Center? Is there something more that you could be doing to address this? Oh, I, I support Dan. And, you know, I think our two agencies who see thousands of individuals yearly mm -hmm. that meet this category of being underserved or at risk or with SUD or behavioral health, um, we know their lived experience. We know what they're facing. But, you know, the Share Center, along with the Haven and other entities, can easily get out and do more advocacy and outreach and education to the greater community on how we can better serve these individuals, how we can set up a safety net with them not having to panhandle to support their addiction and really try to improve the health status and quality of the community in general and reduce poverty. So we have a recovery house. We have many different programs similar uh, in terms of meal site and other supportive systems and through our recovery coach programs and other entities, there's a lot that can be done. So with more with more money or the money you have? I think it could be done with the money we have. Mm -hmm. okay. um, you know, it would be nice to have some support from the city and they do take advantage of our services and bring people to us that, you know, haven't broken the law. Um, but don't have a home at night mm -hmm. and maybe they're drunk on the street, they bring them to us. Okay, great. Um, it's, it's better than taking them to jail. So the funding can either go into the jails or mm -hmm. it can come to, you know, a program like the Haven or the Share Center or, you know, any other group that's, that's taking care of people who are, you know, in the midst of bad life decisions and need a little help, a safety net, like Doug said. Daniel Jones, the Haven, Doug Stewart, the Share Center. We appreciate your frank thoughts today. Thank you. Thank you, Richard.